Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined virtually for the first time with Magenta Pixie. Uh, many of you guys are going to know who Magenta is. She's an amazing author and also, of course, a channel for the White Winged Collectiveness or Collective Consciousness, also known as the Nine. Magenta, it's, a, it's an honor, a true, I'm humbled, privileged to have you here today. How are you doing? Yes, I am doing fine, um, considering the circumstances. Thank you, and I hope you are well as well. Thank you for asking me to join you. It's lovely to connect, finally. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. You and I have been emailing back and forth, I think, for about, about a year, maybe even a year and a half. I know you and Jeff Doherty, also a good friend of mine, you know, done podcasts together, and Jeff and I, of course, had a show. Uh, but obviously, it's finally great to have you here. And yes, not under the greatest of circumstances, but as you and I said off air, sometimes things just divinely align and everything is happening exactly as it was intended. So it's, it's, yeah. it's awesome to have you here. So just real quick, obviously, there's a lot of questions. Um, the first kind of question I think we can just, you and I can just tackle right now is in your opinion, and obviously, I know you just did an amazing video and I will link to that video, of course, when this podcast goes out and all of your books and everything. And, and by the way, guys, if, um, if you're not familiar with her work, please go on Amazon and get her books. Um, I have a couple of them I'm holding in my hands right now. Obviously, the, the, her last one, well, not the last one, but the big one in the series of three was The Infinite Helix and the Emerald Flame, Sacred Mysteries of Stargate Ascension. These books are phenomenal. Um, if you're a starseed or an awakened person, as you read these books, it will actually... Um, turn on a lot of your latent DNA, which has obviously been deactivated over time. So the more, and by the way, the more I read these books, the more awakened I became. And a lot of people who know last year, at the end of last year, I was tweeting storms of information from your books and tagging a lot of people. And I, I, I still get today, Magenta, emails from people who say, you were so inspirational in my awakening because the information that you put into the universe obviously all from your books, really led me to back to those sources. And then I read those books and my life has changed. So I think you and I both know that we're all playing a role pushing this information into the universe. So with all that said, please guys buy our books. Um, you just did a video. It was amazing. It's about, it's two hour and 20 or 30 minute video. It's long, but even young people like my daughters watched it. Young people who are not awakened should watch that. I just want to put that. And again, I'll link to that video, but your opinion right now of what is going on on planet earth okay so when we're looking at what's going on we've got the higher dimensional picture so the non-physical picture and the physical picture so the non-physical picture is like um an energetic representation of the physical picture and vice versa so the energetic picture is that currently there is I'm calling this a timeline war, but from that perspective, it isn't a war. It's simply the universe playing out all these different quantum choices that it can play out when it comes to creation. The consciousness of the individuals on a planet combined with the planet creates these choices and quantum versions of reality. So it's kind of like law of attraction, globally manifested if you will it's like a whole planet working with law of attraction and right now there is we are we're all we're always looking at a potential most probable future for a planet and the potential most probable future is a beautiful timeline where we are freed from oppression and we move into a new creation a new octave, a new vibration, a new world, all of the things that all of the new age teachers and light workers and everyone is talking about. That's where we are headed. But there are groups of individuals on this planet incarnated in human form and those that are not in human form. So it creates like a um, hierarchical structure right. that do not want that timeline to manifest for this planet. So they are working with their own sort of dark magic, if you like, to manifest the timeline that they want. Now, they've been in control for thousands of years since the beginning of our known history on this planet. They have been controlling 
where this planet goes. They've been manipulating everyone to create their own timelines. And that's been happening for thousands and thousands of years. It's a really long story. But around the 2012 time period and the years slightly preceding and certainly afterwards, we have switched into this new timeline. So it's the individuals on Earth that are now in control of this global law of attraction manifestation. These are the individuals known as star seeds, light workers, way showers, wanderers, aware thinkers, individuals who are meditating and holistically living their life in a very wholesome way have shifted the timeline simply because the amount of those individuals reached critical mass, which is what this other group, they always knew that this would happen, right. but they've tried to mitigate it as much as possible. They've tried to delay it as much as possible. And now we have come to sort of crunch time, if you like, where <laughs> we're on the point of manifesting that timeline, but they are doing their absolute final last stand, final showdown before this planet is freed. They are trying everything they possibly can to have a last ditch attempt at, they realize they can't switch the timeline back to this timeline that they want, this darker new right. world order Armageddon timeline, whatever name you want to give it. They realize they can't switch back. What they're trying to do is hijack the timeline that we're on so that it creates like a bleed through so this new world order timeline that they wanted is nowhere near going to manifest for us, for any of us. Right, right. But what they're trying to do is create some of the um, aspects of that timeline and kind of hijack the timeline that we are currently on. So a lot of people think that we're, fa we're facing this new world order timeline, but actually, no, this is the paradise ascension timeline but they are trying to hijack it. Now, if you look at what's happening on the third dimension in this actual physical reality, that is a representation of everything that's happening energetically. When I say energetically, there are multiple dimensions. Right. So I'm just reading here the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension. Now in the fifth dimension, it's already happened. We're already in the paradise timeline. There's no fight, there's no war. Right. It's happened already. But a lot of people haven't quite got there. However, the manifestation for that fifth dimensional um, consciousness has reached critical mass, which is why that energy has been able to filter into the fourth dimension and key us into that timeline. What's happening on the third dimension is all of this is playing out right. amongst the characters that are incarnated on this planet. So you've got, you know, the, the light worker star seeds, people that are hunting for truth, the people that follow like QAnon and um, the Patriots and all of those people. And right. you've also got this, this group, this cabal group and the hierarchical structure. You have other groups that are interested as well that we may not have heard of particularly yet. Right. And then you've got more of um, a fourth dimensional interpretation of that higher energy, which is where you'd be looking at light ships, UFOs, extraterrestrial beings. So there's a whole multitude of different ways of interpreting what's happening. So let me, so that was amazing, by the way. And I, and I think you did an awesome job of summarizing that because it's, um, as you said in the books and as people like myself and you have learned over time, you, you really have to look at things from a multidimensional perspective. And most people here in 3D are looking things from point A to point B, right, linear. When you really have to be the neutral observer from a multi-dimensional perspective. So just to identify as much as you can what you just said, the cabal and the negative interest groups, most people at our awareness levels, the reading that we've done, the learnings that we've done, and obviously I'm not a channel like you, but I've read all this stuff. Um, we, we, we're, we've been led to believe or to think that it's some sort of reptilian presence from this uh, different uh, fourth dimension or whatever dimension, lower vibrational beings that they are that have created the hierarchical infrastructure of, as you say, them service to self. Um, you know, the inverted so service to self shadow matrix. Is that pretty much true? So for people that will watch this, that they can understand this, and then that hierarchical ruling caste under, runs the, as you said that, you know, as you said in your many videos and in the books, the Illuminati, the, run, the royal families, the quote unquote groups that are the human interest of the negative factions. Does that make sense? There, it does make sense. There is truth there. Absolutely. 
what we would be looking at on a third dimensional level is well fourth dimensional level and third are individuals who have evolved along a different um, evolutionary path so you've got many different extraterrestrial beings that evolve from a particular um, DNA structure so DNA lands if you will on a particular planet and then life begins to form right. and you know humans have evolved from this hominid species right there are other extraterrestrial beings that have evolved from different DNA, like feline and avian sure. and reptilian. So these are predominantly um, beings that have evolved from a reptilian DNA. Having said that, that in itself is a huge, vast, multi-dimensional ecosystem. Within that evolution from reptilian DNA, you have some amazing beings, right? Absolutely, beings, yeah, who are of absolute service and love. So just because it's reptilian, right. it doesn't mean it's evil and bad. Absolutely, it just means that that there are larger groups that have um, formed from this reptilian DNA that hold quite a um, uh, predatory energy. Right. right. So these are the ones we are looking at. There are also other groups of different DNA um, origin species that have joined this darker group as right. well. So it's not just reptilian and it's, it's really easy to be able to, to look at um, something and think, well, this is black, this is white, this right. is good, this is bad. These are reptilians, these are humans. And it's never like that. It's course, never ever like that. And if you're caught in this polarity of interpretation, you, you cannot see the bigger picture. It's part of the awakening that people get very confused right. with the whole reptilian thing. Having said all that, yes, there's truth there. That's my understanding of it. No, that's very well said. And I, I always go about saying that in all my learnings uh, and awareness and, and, and reading and stuff like that. Uh, and of course, through my meditation and contemplation has told me that too, that there's, you know, there, it's a, it's a balance, right? There's always going to be light and dark forces or forms of all life and beings. So just to, to, to go back to what you were saying, I thought, by the way, you're doing an amazing job in this. Um, the, so for people to understand it who are new, newer to this, and obviously I have people that follow me that are new to this, uh, just as I have people like you and me that follow me, but um, could they kind of identify, because I think the question that a lot of people have is they'll, they'll say magenta or J, how do these beings, these negative beings of, multiple races and dimensions obviously all service to self how do they control human beings in the third dimension right now and i know i know your answer but i'd like you to share that so that people can understand that okay so they control individuals through a third dimensional and a fourth dimensional system and that's where you can get lost in those two realities because that's where they have a control and having said all that their control structure is much weakened over the last year to two years certainly since 2012 but the, the last year it's much weakened right. the core of this structure has been dismantled right. so right. they are in a weakened state right now but that's where they control they have no influence over the fifth dimension now, right. when I say this, it's the model, the nine show me, right. you will hear other channels saying that they have their hooks right through to the 57th dimension. <laughs> and, and all of that's not, <laughs> all of that's not false. It's not right. false. Right. It's using the structure of reality in a very different way. It's, it's every person has an interpretation of this reality, this non-physical reality. So don't dismiss someone who is saying that they've got their hooks into the you know, 100th right. dimension because they're using a different model. But from the model the nine use with me, which is a model that is, they tell me, very, very simple, <laughs> which to me is like not so simple, but from their point of view, it's a simplified basic model. They are saying to me that third and fourth dimension is where they have their influence that doesn't mean that you that if you're existing in the third dimension or the fourth dimension that you are subject to their control that doesn't mean that because there are places within both of those dimensions that are clear 
and our reality domains that are not hijacked. Right. But that's, they're the dimensions they use to influence. The fifth dimension is free from their influence using the nines model. So that is the place to go and you do this through your consciousness and anyone even a complete and utter beginner who's never heard of this before can access that that realm very very easily and simply and they can do it today so from that point of view there's nothing to worry about this is simply about knowledge it's about raising your vibration so just one last question of that because this is the question that i get from newbies about everything you said and, and, and very clear to me, and I think you're, you're even clearer to the newbies, when you say that they control through the third and fourth dimension. So let me just give you like a really tangible, concrete example. So let's just take a really negative person. We won't name a name, but we'll just take somebody in politics that's quote unquote in the cabal and everybody knows they are. Would these beings literally manipulate them through consciousness meaning they can literally like take the form inside a physical being or is it manipulation through brain waves like how would it actually manifest okay so the individuals that you see in politics that you know are part of the cabal are are what i would refer to as the deep state right these are not these beings these are individuals that are it's a hierarchical structure they answer to a group of human individuals above them right who are in the shadow who we would never know who they are correct exactly exactly and then they will answer to a group above them and then they will answer to a group above them and somewhere in that higher echelon of this structure you will have individuals that yes they are absolutely in communication with these dark beings they're able to communicate with them the way i talk to the right. nine right. they are able to um be taken over by them they can do all the things that a traditional medium can do right um, so you have those controlling the magic the dark the dark um manifestations the dark spell casting and all of right. those things right. and then there's a hierarchical structure coming down now a lot of the cabal and politicians don't even know right how that's done they're not privy to that higher i say higher i mean that's not really the right word because it isn't higher with them but they're not privy to that uh more elite group they're aware of them but they they're all on a need to know basis they're all following orders and they're following orders because a they will lose their comfortable lifestyles right. and B, because they have been indoctrinated exactly. and brainwashed and blackmailed and right right and many of them have alter egos so that when they switch off at night they don't even remember what they've done in the day right when they're talking to you right from their podium on television and you think gosh this person's so evil that's only part of that person right that's right. hijacks the actual soul of that person so this is so multi-layered. So that so all of that, by the way, is so well eloquent, eloquently and elegantly stated. It's part of the MK Ultra system, right? So these these societies that you know the the the, the gatekeepers of these beings at this, like you said, this compart super compartmentalized hierarchy. Really, it's not high, right? It's low, but it is a hierarchy, but yeah. of lower density, lower vibration beings, but. They do manipulate them and control them through black mark. Well, I'm sorry, blackmail, and through uh, programming through MK Ultra. Like you said, they literally psychologically or psychogenically program them to where a point where they can't even know what they're doing half the time. Like you said, they literally are puppets. They're puppet politicos during the day, and then at night they're real people, or vice versa, or it's just turned on and off, right? Exactly. I don't know much about MK Ultra. Obviously, I hear people talk about it because right. it's plastered all over my videos. Sure. I understand MK Ultra is one name for this kind of brainwashing that I'm talking about. Right, right, I right. only know what I've been shown from the nine. And over many years, there have been many different names for these groups. Right. And they've used different things to do it. So in earlier days, it would have been um, more like a, a sort of a hypnosis type thing. Sure using perhaps chemicals and drugs and now it's more to do with um a lot of computerized technology um so yeah there's so much going on there as as said this 
structure that's been there for thousands of years is broken and dismantled right they they haven't got the ability to do what they did so they can't basically program anyone new right now right they're recycling what they've done before they're having to use the resources they've already got in place the new ones coming into this system the the, the babies if you like the children that they were going to groom they're they're not able to um hijack them in the same way the energy isn't conducive anymore right for the energy that they need which is why they're doing what they're doing now right this is, is like a desperate act this yes. is literally a desperate act it's a desperate act but what i would say is and this is something very very important a lot of the truthers and those that follow the whole sort of truth movement do have this feeling that um, it's a desperate last minute act. They've absolutely lost. The light has won and they're all going down and they don't have a hope. Now, what the nine say to me is, whilst that may be true from the timeline culmination that we're moving into, even though this is a desperate act, one must be aware that when it comes to the higher aspects of that hierarchical structure, they do have power. Right. It is not something that we can just dismiss and swat like a little fly. Right. If you do not recognize and respect what they are, then you are not seeing clearly and you are lost. Absolutely. And for you, to be walking, for you to be walking around thinking, yay, we've won. You know, and what's so difficult is the nine say to me, we have to do two things. In order to manifest the timeline we want, we need to think, yay, we've won. Of course we do. Right. But we do that from the fifth dimensional place of zero point. Right. But we also have to be aware of what is going on. And we need to give respect. And I don't mean respect in the way, oh, I respect you because you're so great. I'm right. talking about respecting your... I hasten to use the word opponent because it's not correct, but give respect to your opponent because of the abilities they have, the intelligence that they have, right. and the fact that they're a formidable opponent. Having said all that, if you're stuck there, you'll be in fear. Right. So if you right. find that balance within yourself, that no matter how much you respect them for being a formidable opponent, you are also aware of your own sovereignty and how it is equal to and greater than they are. Right, that way right. you recognize what they are without becoming lost in a silly fantasy, we've won, they've lost kind of scenario. Which, which by the way, and you did a really good job of summarizing this in your last video, the one that I was talking about that you just did a couple of days ago. And that is that the QAnon movement, a lot of those people are exactly what you're talking about. They are so no. swept up in this, it's over. They the white are. hats are coming to the rescue. And, you know, you were so yeah. good in your books of teaching the empowered sovereign consciousness template versus the victim savior consciousness template. And exactly. too many people, and, and obviously no judgment or blame or, or anything, but just point of fact, too many people in the QAnon truther movement are wanting that savior complex attachment right now, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, let me say the QAnon movement is fantastic and i absolutely honor every single person in that movement for the dedication that they are giving to this movement right. what i would like to say to them is if you allow yourself to get stuck in there in QAnon, good you know cabal bad they're going down you are in another program you are in another <laughs> simulation totally a black and magic spell Yes, it's, it's a better spell. one. It's a better one. And I and don't don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying QAnon is is not a accurate or right, right. or right. good. That's not what I'm saying. Right. QAnon himself, if he is genuine and of the light, he would be saying the same thing as me. Right. right. And he would be saying, "Don't get caught up on me. Do not make QAnon your savior." I've seen people go three right. weeks without a Q drop, and they're falling apart. <laughs> you know. Your power is therefore in a backdoor social media um, right. channel rather than within yourself. So I'm not saying QAnon right. is wrong. QAnon is in that alliance-like group, uh, right. predominantly, not fully, but I can explain that. 
what I'm saying is that's another program. It's just a yeah. higher program. And what you are asking for when you get into that mindset is more of the same. Right. What we're in right now, this period of lockdown, planetary and global lockdown, is a third dimensional uh, mirror or, or manifestation or um, match to what is known as zero point or um, the collective dark night of the soul. Um, and it is also known as three days of darkness or however many days of darkness. You've been, we have all been cocooned right. into this zero point physical representation of zero point. That is awful and terrible and frightening, probably in the worst possible way a planet could go into. It is simultaneously the most wonderful, right. blissful, um, loving uh, opportunity because it's pure creation. Right. We are in the moment of pure creation for this planet. Right. We're in what is known as completion. Every planet goes through this in a myriad of ways when they move into completion. And that's where we are. So yes, it's end of days. Yes, it's the final showdown, the last stand. It's a planetary attempt to take over. But it's also zero point, And it is the moment of the most profound creation. When you emerge from this lockdown, you emerge into a new reality. And that reality you emerge into is of your creation right. and of your making. And you are making it now. We collectively are making it now. So do we want to swap one program for another where it's a higher program, but it's still a simulation? Or do we want to move into a reality where we have individual freedom and liberty? It's going to take time to create that on the third dimensional level, but we can step out from lockdown into day one, if you like, and actually day one was the spring equinox, the nine are telling me, but we can step out into the beginning of a new creation with the mindset that we need to be able to then start to create. That doesn't mean there aren't all these different groups and factions fighting over who has the ownership of humanity and who has the ownership of planet Earth. And we will likely enter into a reality where sometimes we might feel like we're being controlled still. And there'll be a lot of people that will say nothing is different. I thought it would all be different now and it's not. And this person's bad and that person's bad you have to go within and look at your um, attunement to your intuition and connect with that higher divine source to be able to download what's going on and download the truth. And if you're not ready to do that yet, the second alternative thing you can do is fine tune your intuition so you can tell when someone speaks to you or you read a book or, or, or you watch a film or whatever, you can tell if that person is genuine and truthful. If you can't tell, that's okay. Your journey is about learning. That right. Your number one journey is, how can I discover who's genuine and who is not? Right. The way to do that is to fine tune yourself. Right. Become genuine and honest yourself. Live the best life you can in the most truthful way. When you do that and you live within truth and integrity, you will then start to be able to see it in other people. You will be able to tell who is of truth and integrity and who is not. And your neighbor might disagree with you, but we, are, we should, and it would be good if we can move into a reality where we're not fighting with one another, right. bearing in mind that a lot of the fights within social media and in the third dimensional world are started and triggered by cabal members Them, who are yeah. sent to infiltrate social media but we need to know who is who and what is what i mean that was so beautiful and so eloquently well stated so i mean I, you know i'm constantly pushing dr david hawkins map of consciousness right which is again raising your vibration so everything you just said is totally discerns and is so totally in tune and attuned to the same things and that is if we move our vibration to one of love right joy serenity reverence peace bliss illumination that's when 
they and their agents, they cannot influence the timeline anymore. They can't influence anything because we will move collectively to a vibration of love. And, and I always just say unconditional love, right? It's a, the Mesoamerican people called it Ani, you know, which is the divine reverence and sacred nature of all things. All things are conscious, all things are sentient. And they knew that. And, 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 and again, the, the, the cabal and their agents and, and the higher dimensional or the lower dimensional, higher dimensional, their, their hierarchies have infiltrated, as you said, for so long. But we are now going there. So one last question about that. And then I want to just talk about Ascension. Trump. And you've done an amazing job explaining Trump. And I think most people in the truth community support Trump and have supported Trump. I think, though, that as you know, because we're on this third dimensional vibrational end of times, you know, timeline right now that a lot of people are seeing what's happening in the United States with this three days of darkness, whatever we want to call it, this lockout, this destruction of the global economy, that Trump is behind it in some way. So in your opinion, is he just basically playing a role in this third dimensional end of day script, or is this really there's ulterior motives behind what he's doing now. And that when we come out of this, you, everyone will be able to pinpoint that Trump truly was working with team light. Mm -hmm. I can't honestly say that everyone will be able to pinpoint that, but yeah, many yeah. will. Yes. Many will see what he's done when they understand the journey. If we do collectively manifest that particular outcome. So yes, Trump is um, very pivotal, pivotal in all this, an extremely pivotal character, but he isn't the one that's doing this. He's in right. a position of authority, right. so he has a certain um, influence, but he doesn't have all full influence, otherwise we wouldn't be in this position. Right. But right. him being the president, is the third dimensional act that led to the breakdown of the core structure of the cabal. Right, His right. election led to that breakdown through um, a, a, a myriad of events. So he's very pivotal, but this is a team effort. And I remember when we first went into this situation and we were first told about the virus and everything, I remember just thinking oh my goodness it's my call to action I've known and I know that many star seeds will have gone through this I've known about this for, for sort of 20 years and this is everything we've been talking to I now need to go into full-on mode and I need to start making videos and talking to people and I was getting myself in a all hands on deck and the nine just calmly said to me <laughs> you are not saving the world on your own right. this is a team effort and there are millions of you so you right. can Take a breather, you can relax. There is no hurry to get your videos out or write a book in 24 hours or whatever you think you have to do. This is a team effort. So it's the same with Trump. He's part of a team. He's in a pivotal position, but so are we all. Right. Every starseed, every truther, everyone who's adding to this movement in a positive way is equal in that team effort. And that's why we're manifesting this wonderful Ascension Paradise timeline, because the team are, despite the little arguments, they are actually working together as one entity, which is really beautiful to see when you see it from the perspective of the, the higher viewpoint. They are working really, really, really well. Beautiful. So, so everything now, the rest of this interview is going to be on the Ascension and the essential timeline. So one question, and you kind of did a good job answering this in the other video, but for this video now, you know, to be even more concise, there's obviously two separate timelines, right? In 3D, there's the essential timeline, which we know will happen automatically when we get to 5D and 5D is already there anyway. But while we're still living partially in 3D, and some of us are in a lot of this 5D, depending on our vibration level, um, what happens is this really you know because this is one of the questions from my group they were they wanted me to ask you does the 3d systems that and everything that's beholden to it finance everything right money i mean pretty much the whole systems debt slavery debt servitude all of that stuff is it unraveling now as part of the you know i guess you could say the destruction or the systematic um deconstruction of the third, third dimension because a lot of people want to ask to you specifically, and then of course for the nine, you know, because we've heard from the ancient texts, the Bible, 
um, you know, tribulations, revelation, all of this stuff where they say that everything has to end, right? Poles have to flip, earthquakes, blah, blah, blah. But does it really have to happen that way? And is what, what is happening, what we're seeing now is just the destruction of all of the 3D systems and then coming out of the 3D system destruction as we evolve out of it, hopefully collectively, you know, we, we vibrate the higher timeline the essential timeline. Is that what's happening? Because again, so many people think that everything has to go to gloom and doom for us mm -hmm. to then metamorphosize into the 5D earth. But what is your thoughts on that? Well, those systems are dismantling now, restructuring right. now. Um, that's true. Let's, for example, take the financial system. There are two timelines at the moment for that that are pretty equal and 50-50. One is where the financial system completely crashes and is restructured. The other one is where there is a huge change and it almost crashes, but doesn't quite. And that is the better timeline. And that looks like the one we're going to manifest. So you're looking at multiple timelines within timelines. When it comes to the, the gloom and doom and the destruction. So if you were to look at um, the timelines as a spectrum, the worst case scenario, so the worst possible timeline would be total annihilation of the earth and all the humans on it and just gone. Okay, so that's what on one end. The other end is no destruction at all whatsoever and we sail through it. Well, we're, we're not there because it's already started. Right. But we're not at the other end either. So it's somewhere within the two extremes. So no, it does not have to be doom and gloom. So what I'm seeing is the most probable timeline at the moment, and it's incredibly difficult to see them because they are shifting so right. quickly. It's almost as though you look at them, and as soon as you look at these timelines, they've shifted again. So obviously, I'm, I'm trying my best to sort of pinpoint what could be the most likely scenario. And it, it appears to be, and this is what the nine have told me, that for many people but not all because that's another thing we're all manifesting a collective timeline we're all experiencing that timeline slightly differently but in a very similar way so for example if i said to you imagine a pink elephant with a blue trunk okay i'm going to see a pink elephant with a blue trunk you're going to see a pink elephant with a blue trunk but those two elephants they're going to be really similar but they're going to be different because my elephant might have a, a little red cloak on it and your elephant might be stood in a by a mountain right. my elephant might have someone sitting on its back eating an ice cream and your elephant might have no one on its back do you see what i mean right that's what i mean by people experiencing different realities different versions of the same timeline but what it looks like is that many individuals not so much the 5d spiritual people at all uh, some possibly, but they won't be individuals that are balanced in 5D. There are individuals who've run off to 5D to hide and they don't want to know about 3D right now and they don't want to know about 4D right now. It's like meditation all the way, nothing else. Right. That's fine, but that in itself is another program because right, <laughs> yeah. you're not integrated. Right. But for those who are integrated and balanced, this won't really be the case for them. But there are many others who are part of that light team who haven't quite integrated everything uh, fully yet. So what might be the case is that the reality we emerge to after lockdown, and certainly within lockdown anyway, it looks like the New World Order timeline. It looks like Armageddon timeline. It looks like a takeover. And we'll be sitting here thinking, all of that was nonsense. The ascension was rubbish. Right. Uh, or everyone who's been predicting this wonderful new world, the golden age, all these religions, the whole thing was a scam. The whole thing was a program. And these dark beings have had control of this planet, lock, stock and barrel since day one. Trump's in on it. The Q's in on it. The Alliance <laughs> are in on it. And we're done for. Yeah, that is what some people might think. But that, again, is a simulated program. It is right. not truth. Truth is what you manifest and what, not what you believe, what you know inside. And there are so many star seeds that know what kind of future we are moving into. Right. They're aware that there's a dismantling. They're, exactly, exactly. <laughs> they, are, they know, and those individuals that know have reached critical mass. Therefore, right. the manifestation of our timelines must 
and will mirror that knowing of that critical mass group because that is how reality works. That is how creation works. Creation matches a geometric structure when that structure is cohesive. These individuals that have reached critical mass are manifesting a cohesive geometric structure that is a blueprint for the golden age. A resonant and coherent structure, exactly. That's it. So it cannot be that it won't manifest. However, how we get there is open to interpretation because we're all going to experience these tiny little differences in the timeline. Right. So destruction, I mean, if you're talking about earthquakes, volcanoes, I mean, I had a lady write to me today, terrified because she just heard an asteroid is going to hit the earth and wipe us all out. And the reason why we've all been sent to our homes and we're on lockdown is so that we're all with our families and in our homes when the asteroid strikes and kills us all. I had to write to her and say, no, no, this is not in any, I mean, I won't say any timeline because everything you can think of creates a timeline, but any timeline that holds cohesive um, focus, what you just said, right. it's not there. Yes, there are celestial bodies that will right. be discovered. Right. Yes, there are um, comet type um, structures that are going to be coming into our atmosphere, but these are not what people think they are. The whole global um celestial cosmic movement is also being hijacked so if there's something coming towards us that's actually going to shower our planet with these beautiful photonic light streams that are going to wake up our dna the cabal um hijacked structures are going to say it's going to hit us it's the opposite they yeah. Will, yeah they will do everything they can to hijack fear because they're trying to stop this awakening which they can't stop because it's already happened and we've already you know reached critical mass so no this is not doom and gloom what this is is a retreat it's a hiatus it's a it's a, a zero point moment that can be of in uncertainty but also of pure knowing it is a place of creation and what it really is for anyone in the truth movement or spiritual movement is it's your opportunity to live your mission and do what you came here for and that is to guide the other individuals through this because if they are stuck in the third dimension and haven't even reached the fourth and even those that are in the fourth dimension as well, many of those individuals are lost right now. People are falling apart. They're right. in collective trauma and they are in desperate need of your healing. I've seen people trying to do what's called red pill someone right. and bombard them, a br Terrible. brand new newcomer to Terrible. this whole movement Terrible. asking what's going on. And the next minute they've got images of, you know, satanic child right. sex trafficking and, and all the rest Adrenochrome, of it. Adrenochrome, yeah. Exactly. And then these poor newcomers are like, well, either they'll think it's right. not and turn away or you're sending them into trauma that they're going to take years to recover from. So be gentle with the newcomers. Having said that, we don't have the time anymore to treat them like kindergarten babies. Right. So we've got to find a balance where we are telling them pretty quickly of what's going on without scaring them and sending them into more trauma. So it's, it's all about balance and it's not an easy one. We're all on really challenging timelines right now. But well, and, and people have to choose magenta, as you said. I mean, we, we can't be gentle anymore, but they do have to choose to, you know, receive the awareness. And, and a yes. lot of people, as you know, are still immune to this. Yes. They're still so yes. cognitively dissonant. You know, I'll point to my oh, yeah. family. They won't yeah. do it. But as you said, we can't, you can't bludgeon them. But at the same time, uh, the days of like not attempting to have to go away now too, because we are on this timeline to get to this higher vibrational frequency and it really does come down to us. Yes, absolutely. Disclosure is well underway and we are the ones giving disclosure and we need to be responsible about how we do that. And there are a lot of people that are so frustrated and right. they, they, they've waited so long and they want this out now uh -oh. to help you find that balance. Okay, cool. You just jer jerked it in now, but you're back now. Fine. Yeah, you um, did as well. <laughs> I thought we were going to get attacked, but we're good. We're good. It's okay, so in the last it. like in the last 15 minutes, then let's talk really about ascension. I think people are okay. really confused about this. I think a lot of the New Age books, um, 
do confuse people. A lot of people think it's literally spaceships are coming down and everybody's going to be moved into la, 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 the golden age and all that stuff. And, you know, your books did an amazing job. I can name other books. I mean, I'm a really big student of the Ascension. I've read the, I've read everything. Right. And I, and I, I totally understand that it really is just raising your vibration to a frequency of love, um, to becoming a neutral observer, to, um, you know, being a peaceful, resonant, coherent being who accepts, again, it's the Ani, it's the universal nature, the divine and sacred reverence of all of life and the respect and the golden rule and all those things. But, you know, just, can you just share a little bit, you know, your understanding and again, your books, especially the infinite helix was so, so good to me. I mean, so great as a revelational book, but just explain what ascension really means to people so that they, in my opinion, can understand it better than like a lot of the new age books. Because I think really a lot of the new age books thinks that have taught people that they're going to be ships and they're just going to be like, they're going to drop anchor or not anchors, but like ladders and come up to the higher dimension. So can you talk a little yeah. bit about that? That's interesting. Um, I was told many years ago about the ships landing on the planet and that would take people and lift them off to a place of safety. And obviously in those early days, back in 1993, I didn't realize that that was a metaphor and believed right. it to be um, literal. Right. I have to be honest with you, I don't have all the answers. I'm decoding what the nine are saying to me, um, just like anyone else. And obviously right. the books that I have written are transcribed from, from them. Yeah. Um, I always believed that lockdown and martial law, and I know we aren't at martial law yet, and we might not be. It, it, we are kind of quite, oh, that's that's a difficult one as to sure. whether we're going to get that. So that's kind of 50-50 right. as well, because there are more than one group manifesting that. Some groups want it, some groups don't, and they, they have, both have influence. But I always believed that lockdown and martial law was metaphor. Uh, I, I, and now we're in it. It's not metaphor. It's literal as in sure. lockdown. Anyway. Sure. So I, I, I must admit, I did think the other day, well, you know, are the ships landing? Um, you know, is, is that literal as well? Um, so it's a difficult one. So I mean, I, it, maybe it could be, I mean, that's what I'm saying is yeah. like, I just, you know, in my meditations and my contemplations, I really think that it's not a location. It's a state no. of being. Right. Exactly. So I, I would say, I mean, obviously the third dimension can mirror those higher um pathways so if ascension is raising one's consciousness and raising one's vibration and changing the dna structure of the body might it be for some people that they do actually experience a physical point. Um, manifestation of that where actual extraterrestrials do come down in ships i'm not going to subscribe fully to that literal story but i'm not going to completely it reject yeah. it right. but the story that seems or, or the reality that seems most in alignment for the majority of star-seeded individuals within the fifth dimension this is about raising the consciousness to thinking in that fifth dimensional way in that sovereign way then everything follows uh, the emotions so you are you are living in integrity you are um living with love compassion and you're right. bringing all of these emotions into your everyday life and then ultimately this is about a change in dna from a carbon-based right. structure to a crystalline based structure right. silicon or silicate i've said to the nine many times is this actually literal you know or is this a metaphor and what they will say is if you were to look at the dna in a microscope, given any of the current technology that we have, you would see an anomaly, but you wouldn't know what it was because the crystalline DNA are filaments that are not seen to the naked eye because they're right. made of quantum light. Right, they're biophotons, right. Can't yeah, see absolutely, photonic light. However, that technology that we have naturally within our bodies is also available in an actual created technology sense and th this is one of the advanced technologies that have been hidden from us and potentially used against us um although those that have it a lot of them don't understand the technology themselves even those at the higher echelons of this structure there is a different group of individuals that are working with this technology so uh, when we move into this new uh, ascension 
some people might see that as you know living out in nature no buildings no structures um, being able to sort of uh, transport oneself from one place to another by location yes all of that's part of it because we have the crystalline technology of these photonic light filaments within our bodies but there is also a kind of a technology a advanced technology pathway as well and that in itself has a whole other um, hijacked structure because you're looking at AI versus helpful technology and advancements so we've got a whole sort of um, uh, nuanced reality there as well this pathway into this ascension timeline there are many ways that that, that timeline in itself can manifest because there are infinite timelines within that one timeline everything is a fractal of everything else and has bits of the whole within it and it's it is a very complex structure to see and so the way forward if individuals want to actually decipher that is to find a way to be triggered if you will right. have one's own dna triggered and then go away and let your own uh, memory and knowings and triggerings show you this reality that's the fifth dimensional journey so listening to someone else talk about this is a trigger right. so somebody listening to you and i talking right now Absolutely. are being triggered reading a book looking at artwork listening to certain music um, so right now it's very important to be aware of the third dimensional structure and the whole cabal alliance journey but it's even more important to allow yourself to be triggered with these these photonic light codes that are coming in or that are coming up from within us and allowing that to process within our minds and in our hearts and seeing what we see because when you do that you become a planetary teacher you can then take your place and go out and teach others what's happening is is this domino effect every person that becomes awakened then starts to teach what they know regardless of what level they're at and then others awaken and they start to tell others and it's and it gets to the point where everybody wakes up that's where we are right now in this great grand awakening on all these different levels so it's beautiful so just kind of last four or five minutes um you know we might be able to go a little bit longer depending on how amazing your answer is <laughs> in your opinion, in your opinion, where are we going from here? And I know that timelines are still moving and obviously our collective consciousness, raising our vibration, getting enough people, as I, you know, as, uh, as I say to, um, you know, above the line of integrity, 20% of society or whatever, you know, is awakened or 15 or 18 or whatever percent. We know that, you know, just the, the quantum physics aspect of like, it takes, you know, one aware ship in the harbor to raise all the boats, right? So a lot of us vibrating at high levels can get a lot of people to move. But like just from a timeline in the 3D realm as it is now, do you see, do you see the world going to no cabal by, again, just assuming everything stays the same, the same, you know, the, this quote unquote negative um, end of days, gloom and doom timeline continues to play its game out and then it ends and then we, we, we come out of it. Do you see by middle of next year, third quarter of 2021, do you see us being close to being in a golden age? I'm thinking 2021 is going to be the year that where we see glimpses. I mean, we can see glimpses of the golden age now, yeah. but I'm talking about tangibly. So sure. it's like 2020 is when we tangibly see glimpses of the true reality. Right. So the great reveal for 2020 is the third dimensional structure and the cabal. They are like being seen. So do you see that then before you keep going, because I want you to keep going, but do you see as, you know, again, I'll go back to QAnon, but you know, they said that the, the statement is all will be revealed. Yeah. So do you see the next six months, because we're almost, you know, in April, the next six to eight months, which would be the rest of 2020, do you see just a great unravel? Like literally yeah. everything coming, you know, to, 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 to the forefront? Or do you think that stuff will still be controlled? Because I think there is a risk, Magenta, in some people, if they knew what things were really about, there would be, you know, psychological terror and torment. So it almost seems like this is a very controlled reveal and phased. Controlled at the moment where we are now, the cabal still have... A reasonable amount of control so that's a control that they have 
has to be slowly uh, broken down to mm. the point where they no longer have any control. So that's going to take time and they're going to tighten their control to the maximum in order to try to hang on to it. That's why it's going to look like the new world order timeline. Right. Which is right now, which is literally which is happening right now. now, which is right now and, and in the coming weeks. And then that control will eventually loosen each, each step that that control loosens brings another level of reveal. Now, will everything be revealed to everyone? Highly unlikely. However, enough will be revealed for the world to be able to know that the world's never going to be the same again and that we are moving into something new. But how they interpret that will be at different levels because even with a complete reveal, you could have a person who can't actually see what's being revealed to them because their brain is not able to interpret it. So again, we are going, that's where the star seeds and the truth has come in because they're going to be helping. And right. much of the reveal is coming from the star seeds and the truth is anyway, in this hopefully balanced and gentle way. Um, so the cabal, tightening their control to the absolute fullness that they can and then something occurring that then takes that control away and more and more um i won't say control more and more power comes in from these groups of light now what's interesting is something occurs here that is new to me from the nine uh, they haven't spoken to me about this before very much when we move into this zero point that we're in now, which is lockdown, it is a point of neutrality. So it's neither light nor dark, but both. And we choose which we want because it's a place of creation. This is then mirrored within the third dimension. So if you are looking at a group that is of service to self, and you are looking at a group that is of service to others, in order for balance to take place between these groups, there has to be a moment or an action that comes from neutrality. Now, what that is looking like to me, from what the nine are saying, is a group that is of the neutral polarity. They're very rare individuals, but they come into planetary systems at the moment of completion. So it looks as though we will see a neutral group who are, ne who are polarized within a neutral polarity step forward. When I say neutral, these are individuals that will step back and allow the game to play out because they know that completion is the moment that they step in. They will allow this game to play out. However, if the dark tries to step over far too much, to try to unbalance everything, they will then step in as a neutral individual, but they will be on the side of the service to others polarity Light. in order to bring it into balance. Now, this is what's happening. Because the cabal are tightening everything to their absolute fullest um, that they can, they're calling in the neutral groups, which are the groups or group that will bring balance. Which they're, they're doing it literally unbeknowing or unbeknownst to them anyway by, by their actions, right? Yes, absolutely. They're, they are calling in the very reality that they don't want. Right. And hoping, because they come from a structure where the, the being that communicates with them tells them that it is God. It is a creator. So they believe this fully. And that, that being is telling the truth. It is a God. It is a creator. Right. But it's not the God. It's not right. the creator. It's just one higher level than, than, right. than they are. Uh, which right. is the I, I get it. The creator gods, little Gs. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah. And so they've invested all of their um, belief system in a higher being. Uh, but there is a being above that one <laughs> or, you know, that no, no, totally. No, I totally understand. Everything is compartmentalized. Um, I, I would be remiss if I let you go, by the way, this has been a phenomenal podcast. Um, and I'm going to get this out right away. And of course, if you want the file or whatever, but we'll, we'll push it out. Cause th this has just really been good. I mean, it's a little bit more advanced, but you know, I think, I think basic people will still be able to get it, but let me just ask you some, for some basic people, 
So do you see or foresee, because one of the big fear things right now, and obviously you and I are not in fear, um, but one of the fearful rumors that makes it out there right now is that the United States, due to um, you know, this virus escalating, which they expect in two weeks from now, as we'll know how bad it really is, right? Because the incubation periods and all that stuff. And obviously I work in the medical side of things, so I hear all these different things. But Oh, and let me just say this for you and for your fans and followers is we know that vitamin C kills the virus, okay? We know that 500 milligrams to two grams per hour, depending on your level of severity of symptoms, literally will kill the virus within 12 to 24 hours. I mean it, vitamin C, of course, God is good, right? Vitamin C is better than any drug that we know of, antiviral, antimicrobial, antibiotic, it works better than everything. So anyway, so vitamin C, but assuming that the virus escalates, people are worried of unrest. People are worried of lack of money, lack of resources, lack of food. You know, and I would say that this isn't just in the United States. This is in the West, probably the whole world, because everywhere is locked down. Do you foresee, and maybe you can ask the nine um, at some point, if that is part of the gloom and doom, you know, end of days timeline where we do have to go through that strife, or you don't think that happens? Well, unfortunately, you know, I was talking about the cabal when they tighten in. Mm -hmm. That's kind of part of that. What they're doing at the moment, because they do still have a certain amount of control, and I'm not right. trying to put people into fear, just right. give people knowledge. Exactly. That's why it's going to look like a New World Order takeover, because the evidence of any alliance or any assistance won't actually be tangible, certainly not in Europe. It is in America because you have Trump. Every time he speaks, it's tangible that you have light there right. because it's in him and his team. But the rest of us, what I would say to everyone else in any other country is look to America because America is the leader in this. And I don't mean in a political sense, I'm talking about in an energy sense. Right. And the cabal tighten their grip um, because they do have a certain power still they are um, playing a game with the people. So it's a case of, we really don't want to get the police out on the streets and give them powers. So we're asking you all very nicely to just stay in. Right. Thank you very much, but we're not gonna do any worse. And then what they do is they deliberately get their other, um, whoever it is that they've got on their payroll or in their family or whatever, right. we, they send them out on a mission to cause strife in Mayhem. the streets. Yeah. And then they can step in and say, well, unfortunately, there has been a lot of um, looting and rioting. Problem, reaction, solution, right? Yeah, yeah. the problem, reaction, solution, unfortunately, is, is in its throes now. And that is going to play out. Now, the people themselves, they don't want to cause strife and, and trouble, but people are in terrible fear right. and the base chakra um, is being activated to its fullest, as in... If people think they're losing their securities, home, warmth, money, right. food, right. they lose it. And that's happening. That's being fueled by others. So they'll sit back and just wait for humanity to just fall into the trap by looting. If they don't loot and they're peaceful and they do do as they're told and stay in the houses, then they'll pay people to do it. So you're lost either way with that. Right. This right. is their game. Unfortunately, that's going to happen, I right. absolutely feel. But the issue here is how long, right. how much damage is it going to do? How much can the light and we as a team mitigate that through our meditations, through our focus? And um, so, yes, that's there, but it doesn't have to get to a point and it won't get to a point of absolute destruction. We're looking at pockets and areas. If you're out in the country, in a quiet place, or like a friend of mine living in the jungle in a beautiful wooden shack, <laughs> surrounded by plants and lizards. Yeah. yeah, you're doing well. But if you're if like you're me and you're in Los Angeles, but I'm far enough away too, you're, yeah. there's risk. And that's why people are buying guns and ammunition yeah. and stocking up. You're right. I mean, we're being very honest. Yeah. And by the way, I'm really glad that you just said what you said, because what I'm going to do now moving forward in all my messaging is I'm going to urge people. I mean, I've always urged people to raise their vibration, but now it's about being calm yeah. and not reacting to... Yes 
the nonsense that is going on around you that's being funneled by them, right, that's from fine. their mainstream news sources, and to just understand that whatever is happening, it's even by them, like you said, their agents will be on the street yes. causing the problem. Because human beings right now literally are still, for the most part, calm. We know that everything is unraveling, yes. and now it's about being positive for the future and knowing that everything that we'd be holding to in the past is gone now what do we manifest for the future let's manifest something beautiful absolutely right? i mean you you said it <laughs> yeah that's 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 perfect and that's how it is so i think it's being aware that we are going to go through this dark night of the soul three days of darkness which is a meta it's not going to be three days right. you know it could be a section of time that adds up to three um, the darkness could actually mean the internet going down, possibly. Sure. I think that, that, you know, there are many things that could happen, but trying to second guess how this energy is going to manifest, it's helpful in the sense of being given um, a slight uh, advanced information before it comes. The nine are kind of giving me information 24 hours before it's coming, which is much, much quicker than I've ever had before. I've always been able to see like a year ahead or 10 years ahead or an hour, um, a week ahead or a month ahead. But what's happening in the third dimension is, is I'm being given things about 24 hours in advance. There's no need to really know what's going to happen next right. week or the week after because we really are in this compressed time right. where this cabal, and as I said, it's not the deep state that's the issue. We are looking at a, a, a being or group of beings that does have power. And we do need to respect and acknowledge right. that without going into a battle with it. I mean, really, you're in a battle with this, this group of beings, if you will. But the best way to see this metaphorically is a, um, a, a martial arts battle. Right with honor and you know with fairness um with training i mean if you see two martial artists fighting they will bow to one another right. at the beginning and again at the end it's like that mutual respect yeah. yeah it's not about hatred and retribution and i know that that's very difficult for people right now when they're in this situation but that is the path we are being called to take and it doesn't take many to reach critical mass so if we have a nice critical mass, even if they're a minority when it comes to numbers, of these individuals that stand in integrity and sovereignty, then they are the ones that are powering up that timeline. So we just have to sort of sit tight, but we're not sitting back and doing nothing. Right. Get out there and do what you can. I've, I've said this many a time. My father, my late father, always used to say to me, right from when I was a teenager, this phrase, and I've followed it my whole life, and it's so wonderful because it helps you to make a choice whenever something comes along. And that is, please give me the, um, the grace to accept what I can't change, the strength to change what I can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. Right. If you're in a situation where you can't change anything, you can't rebel against the cabal-controlled government on your own, you certainly could in a team, and that's what we're doing, but we're not right. rebelling on the streets with violence. We're not rebelling. We are standing strong in silence, but we are a unified group of thousands, if not millions, and we're all connecting with one another on the internet and telepathically. So that team is in place, but we can't do anything physically, so therefore we accept where we are, um, and we just keep our eyes and ears open for the next step. If you're in that place of connection, you'll be guided all the way and you will have been guided for years. There'll be many of you that are in the country and were supposed to be there to not be in, in, the, in the thick of this. There are others of you that are in the cities because you're holding the energy right. for those cities. Where you are is where you're meant to be. That's exactly you, right. Absolutely. Magenta, this has been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I really, I mean, we really kind of talked over everything, answered all questions. Um, I'll give you just a last summarizing thought. You know, it's my, it's my understanding, my awareness, my knowing, um, you know, through the work that I do that we are for sure going to end up in a golden age. Now it's going to take obviously enough of us, star seeds, wanderers and, and, and awakened humans to collectively manifest that reality. And as I always say, and people know me, I say that we totally control our reality through conscious 
words, focused thoughts, and massive intentional action. So now it's up to each of us, you know, through people like you, through people like me, pushing this energy and this message into the universe to manifest that timeline of ascension, paradise, golden age. It's going to happen. I'm so glad that I spoke to you today, but you have the final say, final, final words. How do we as a collective make sure that that happens? We live as if it's happened already. And I know that that is a massive, massive challenge because we're right in the middle of this dark night of the soul, this attempted planetary takeover. But it, it, we can be aware of that and be aware of what's happening and go and sort of you stock up on our groceries or whatever it is we need to do. But in our emotion, we live as if it's already happened. And that will be this beautiful feeling of relief, of um, certainly not, I told you so, all of you, which is where a lot of the truthers are. Can't wait for you all to find out. And then you're going to say sorry to me, you know, because <laughs> I've been right all these years. That's not where we're going. It is about a, a relief. It is about an excitement, a joy. But what I would also add is if you are in fear, that is okay. You are not failing and you're not doing something wrong because right now this is a fearful time. If you are in fear and you are a starseed or a way shower, the reason why you're in fear is so that you will understand what everybody else is feeling. Because if you sail through this with no fear, you can't relate to anyone else. You go into the fear and you feel it. I've had some fear, I have to say, of things that might happen. And then the nine, they don't come in and save me. They don't come in and say, oh, there's no need to be afraid of that. I'm in this fear and I have to find a way to integrate that myself. Then I say to the nine, this particular fear, am I justified in this? I'll tell you, my fear is forced vaccinations. It terrifies me because I am so sensitive to any pharmaceutical drug. Right. Um, I also know what will be in this vaccination. Well, I will say I, no. My children are unvaccinated. I, I will, yeah. I, I've already said I will opt out of this physical experience if I'm forced well, to do that. So I'm with I you. Mean, yeah, to totally. And I said to the nine, you know, oh, that's my fear. And they didn't come in straight away. I was a good 24 hours worrying about forced vaccinations. I now know why, because... I can relate to everyone in fear and it's more than fear. It's terror and it's deliberate. Right. They're mining that fear. When you go through that, you will understand what everyone else is going through. But a star seed goes through things very rapidly because they right. integrate very rapidly. Right. Then you come back to a place of um, uh, safety, a place of centering. And then you see clearly again, I will answer that one question that I asked the nine. And they said to me, if it gets to that level of um, the cabal control, and th there are things going on behind the scenes regarding that when it comes to legal channels and when it comes to lobbying. Um, so it may never get to that anyway, if it, if it was to, my fear was them coming into your house, bursting through your front door, holding you down and forcing the vaccination into your body. The nine said, no, that's not what is going to happen because they have to follow certain protocols. Um, even if they would want to do that, they can't because they're under some sort of um, law themselves. It would be more manipulation and right. it would be more to do with sanctions. And they said to me, it is sanctions that you can live with. Because right. if you're a starseed, sanctions aren't sanctions. You're just simply going into another reality where you move into that, that belief, that, that um, thought, which is, please give me the courage to change what I can change and right. accept what I can't. And I don't mean acceptance. I don't mean accept, accepting something that you, that you hate and, and um, just simply accepting it begrudgingly. I mean actual acceptance of it and not allowing it to control your emotions. So forced vaccinations looks unlikely re g given the sort of um, uh, lobbying and the illegal things that are all around the edges and, and, and the sort of alliance of white hats and, and their agendas. And if it does get to that point, which is obviously their, their agenda, the cabal's agenda, is absolutely microchipping and, and vaccinations. I will say that they wanted this done a long time ago 
you know, th th they're not happy that this is taken until 2020 and they still right. haven't got what they want. Right. This was supposed to happen ages ago. They're way off scale. Right. <laughs> right. Time. No, it's but absolutely no, it's true. not going to get to that kind of force. It's more to do with sanctions and manipulations. And again, this is temporary. This dark night of the soul, three days of darkness time period is temporary. We are going to emerge out of it into this new society this new reality that may look controlled but then if you look a little bit further and you look behind the scenes you will see that it's not and then we have this 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 shift this change until we get to a point when the cabal is no more the dark service to self control is no more and that is absolutely the timeline we are on and the most likely scenario for this planet and Absolutely. You see, beautiful. Yeah. And obviously we, it's up to us to collectively manifest yeah. that timeline to, to finality, but do you see, and again, I know everything's moving, but you know, I hear a lot of things, but I, would you say that 2022, so basically 18 months, 19 months from where we are now is when we will effectively see the elimination of the cabal. I'm seeing potentially 2021 having a lot of evidence of this new world. Um, and I, I feel that, you know, the deep state influence could potentially end before that this year. Uh, so yeah, we are looking at 2020, 2021 and 2022 and 2023. We're looking in this compressed time period with it getting better and better, even though for a while it appears to be really clamping down. Um, so it's hard to give a time right. because both is happening now. We're actually already being freed right now. Right. It's happening behind the scenes. Right. Stuff is going on behind the scenes that's really, really, really good. Right. And the cabal is still in control behind the scenes too. So it's happening now. And it's this incremental change, the, the, the tightening of the cabal and then the slow loosening of it. And this is a... Um, a third dimensional manifestation of what's already happened in the higher realms. Right. The dismantling of that core structure, which happened, well, been happening since 2012, but specifically last year, you know, the whole Emerald Flame, the Emerald Gateway, right. and right. all of those time periods that we've been through that are still happening now and are still, we're still going through these series of gateways. So, yes, it's very important to stay in that place and to live even if you only live for an hour a day in that place, right. even if you just go into meditation and imagine that the cabal, the service to self cabal right. are no more and that we are in this beautiful golden age, imagine and take your emotions to where, how you would feel the freedom right. and the hope and the joy of, uh, and the bliss. And the, the most important thing for everyone here to focus on, it's not just about you and your soul, when we look at the um, continuation of the human race, we are looking at our grandchildren, right, our great grandchildren, right. our great great grandchildren, or our nephews and nieces and our great great nephews and nieces. We're looking at the descendant line and the incarnational opportunities for us as a soul to come back to this planet if we want to, down our own incarnational line into a reality that will be unrecognizable from how it is now, Having said all that, the time period when the soul's most wanted to incarnate for is now. Right now. Because this is completion. Exactly. And completion is a wonderful time. It really, yeah. really is. Even though it's, it's, it's difficult to see that. Completion it's, is a very exciting time. It's just the third dimensional aspect of things, of duality and polarity, as you've said so eloquently in your books. Magenta, this was... So amazing. So if people want to work with you, connect with you, obviously they can buy your books on Amazon. They can go to your website, which is magentapixie.com. But how else would you want people to um, involve themselves or connect with you right now? Okay. I think my books are still for sale on Amazon. I mean, obviously anything could change. We don't know which companies are selling things. Um, they, they were also on the book depository and a couple of other bookshops as well. I'm not sure. They are available in Kindle form and I'm pretty sure Kindle isn't affected right now. Um, I'm on Facebook, Magenta Pixie on Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram as well as Magenta Pixie. I post everything there. Um, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> so you can find me on all the social media platforms and um, you'll find 
fact, um, if you go onto my website, there's a place where you can email me. Most things go through to my PA webmaster stroke husband <laughs> who will filter most things, you know, so I don't always see the emails because I do get some really right. um, I'm sure, just like me, just like me. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. You've been absolutely phenomenal. This podcast is just, I mean, I'm literally going to call my podcast company as soon as I, as soon as it uh, exports and say it goes up next week, get it done. So again, namaste. I have so much Thanks. love in my heart for you. Thank you. This has been phenomenal. A lot of people are going to benefit from this. And again, to my audience, it's, I always end my podcast now with just this. It's very, very important to raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. I will see all of you guys soon. Support the amazing Magenta Pixie.